Wagner and Detainee magazines have got your back. Get your copy now or subscribe online at thegardener.co.za. Tanya Fissa Live is proudly brought to you by Gardena. Realize your gardening dreams. Wonder for the love of gardening. And TanyaFissa.com for all your gardening goodies and supplies. Good morning, everybody. I'm glued to the screen, the screen, because so many people are here already. Hi and welcome. It's Thursday, 11 o'clock. I hope you've got your juice because it's way too hot for coffee. It's like hot, 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 guys. Um, I hope you've done your mulching. I hope you watered early this morning because if not, no, 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 stop, 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 stop. It's too late now. You can't go out and water between the hours of 10 and 3 because all you're going to do is stress your plants out even more, especially if it's a hot day. So you've got to sit tight and you've got to pray. Yeah, that they're going to be okay, and then you can water a little bit later in the afternoon. Hi and welcome. It's great to be with you today. And today we're talking summer bedding plants. And summer is here, boys and girls. Yes, it is. So, um, a quick catch-up on the week that's been. It's been really crazy. I've been involved in a lot of admin things. Oh, I'm really bad at admin. You know, file 13. Yeah, uh, yeah I don't know. <laughs> I know that if anybody from my team is watching, they're like, yes, okay, we know, yeah, I'm really bad at admin, but anyway, give me gardening, I'm way, way better at that, um, but yeah, it's been an admin week, and it's been planning your gardener and detainee magazines for next year, yep, we're planning our features, we're working on where we're changing things, where we're upping the game, and guys, I'm really excited. Um, there's some really lovely things in store for you guys um, to bring you more good gardening advice, more up-to-date info, meet some of the personalities behind gardening, and so much more. And that makes me truly excited because um, it really is all just about sharing. Um, that's the, the, the bottom line. That is the bottom line. Um, last Sunday was Garden Day, guys. It was garden day, and um, yo we did we have fun. I mean, it was it was a long day, but it was a great garden day. And I did actually get to spend some time in the garden. Uh, turned out to be a glorious day. Uh, we walked around. We sat on the lawn. Ah, oh, the kids were with us. It was just really, really lovely. Um, so I do hope that you that you did tune in, but you can go and watch it again. Um, if there, we had a questions and answers session, there was a, a, a section on Candide. Um, my, that, that mental um, comedian, and I have to only use the mental because I think him and I would do really well together on like some kind of gig. He'd probably plant the plants upside down, but that's okay. Um, what's his name? Skulk Besaidenot. You know Skulk? He's feeling positive. Yeah, you know that dude, he's hysterical, I love him, that wild hair, shame his dog wasn't feeling all that well on Sunday, but I, I believe it's feeling much better now, so uh, Skulk was doing a flower crown, oh it had a big thing going on here with a big plastic flower, but never mind, never mind, it was, it was really a great day and, and a big shout out and a thanks to uh, the Garden Day crew um, who set everything up, so uh, right folks, let's see who's here, um, Let's have a look, let's have a look, let's have a look. Ah, okay, Tian, good morning, Tian. It's a lovely morning in Cape Town. Beautiful. Oh, you had fun on Garden Day. Excellent. Um, uh, Jill, Jill Sutherland, my garden needs this tonic. Ah, Renat, hello, hello, from a windy PE, from a warm and windy Ibo, Ibo. Rosemary, good morning. Maureen, good morning from Kloof Merlin. Stuart Thomas, um, good morning from a dry Vereniging. Have you guys not had much rain yet? I'm, I'm sure you should have had a storm or two by now. Um, let's hope it comes soon. 
Sure. Um, Kerry joining from South Coast. Uh, Kathy Mary Rosa Zavell, what a what a wonderful name from Coxstad. Hello, um, Catherine. Hello from Cape Town, Lynn. Um, I look very summery. Yes, I am very summery. I'm wearing my my Bloma shirt today. Um, it's Bloma, summer Bloma. Ne, ne. I think the bees could even mistake these flowers here because very bright, very 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 bright. Um, Brigitte from Gordon's Bay. Good morning and welcome. Um, Jamir, hello from Durban North. Um, <laughs> somebody else also helps paper, hates paperwork and would rather play with the plants. Yes, I get you. Um, Brigitte, if you get a composter for filth. <laughs> Brigitte, I love you. It's 10 out of 10. If you get a composter for file 13, it becomes really easy. Hey, then I get into such trouble, I'll be shouted at terribly. Um, Anna Marie, good morning from Rustenburg. Bonita Dixon, hello, good morning. Ryan, good morning, Ryan. How are you and how are your bulbs doing? Uh, yeah, definitely I need to know how your bulbs doing. How's the seed sown going? Uh, Ryan is a, is a relatively new gardener and, um, and I'm very pleased. I, I really am pleased that he's like getting into this thing called gardening and getting his hands dirty and getting in there. So welcome, Ryan. It's good to have you on board this morning. Um, Meringue from Botswana. Sure, sure. Oh, 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 Botswana. Lovely, lovely, lovely. We've got Siena Colony, Freistaat, Elmerie. Okay, hot topic. Moving along. Um, be safe. That's all I'm going to say to you. Um, Almarie is, <coughs> excuse me, just be safe. Um, Gabby um, from Edenvale, home officing. Pfft, home officing, AKA gardening, Pfft, love it. Bonnie um, from Hillcrest, uh, Zambia, Hillary from Zambia, hello. And welcome to the family. Oh man, boys and girls. Ah, oh, this is so cool, let's see who else is here. Um, uh, Marty, good morning. Shannon, Yvette, Morel. Um, yeah, there's a whole lot of guys here. Um, Mary, the mouse birds stole all my almonds and eventually killed the tree. Hi, Boana. Yeah, mouse birds are okay. They, they can be pretty destructive. Guys, I'm already sweating up a storm here. So do excuse me. <laughs> um, Emma El Elmindia from YouTube. Ah, oh, excited. The first time for joining. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We hope you have loads of fun um, and, uh, and make all your other friends come along and watch as well. Right, guys, let's get on to it. Thank you and welcome for joining us and, and it really is great to have you here with us today. So, where do we start? Where do we start? Guys, it all starts, as you know, with the soil. It starts with the soil. And please, 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 I beg you to get that right. Because folks, if you don't do that, the money that you spend, the money that you spend on whatever a little punnet of bedding plant costs, whether it's 25 Rand, whether it's 30 Rand, whether it's 35 Rand, if you do not prepare your soil correctly, you are wasting your money. Okay, please. It all starts with the soil. Do your prep right, like with anything, do your prep right, and then you get it going. You get it going. You give it the best start possible. Um, you know, and, and I know so many bedding plants, and, and I'm going to do this here. I'm just going to put a couple out here for you guys to see. I mean, these, these, are, these are true bedding plants that you're going to find at your local garden centre as you walk around them today. Many of these bedding plants, when you are buying bedding plants, you know, it's always very interesting that the, 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 the guys at the, at the garden centres and at the nurseries that you visit, they'll say to you when you've got three or four trays on your trolley and there you're going merrily up to the pay point, they'll say to you, ma'am, would you like some compost with that? And the first thing you turn around and say, no, nah, I, I got enough compost. Thank you. I have enough compost. I have baby house. No, you man. You don't know if you've got 10 soccer baby hayes. The only reason why they're asking you folks is simply to make sure that you have got the right stuff to get you going. Because if you don't, if you don't, you're not going to give these guys the best nutrition and head start that they need. But there are a few other things just beyond 
the compost. The compost is first thing, but there are a lot of other things that we need to get right as well. The other thing is, if you're doing errands, you know, you've got to go to the post office, you've got to go here, you've got to pick up the pills, then you've got to go and pick up Johnny, then you've got to do this. Then, only then, at the end, do you go and stop at the garden centre and pick up your bedding plants. Do not pick them up first thing in the morning when you're running your errands. Because if they sit in the boot of your car, yes, uh, you're guilty. I, I, I know you are, I know you're guilty. You've put them in the boot, close the boot. Pff. I mean, that's what they do to people in cops and robbers stories. They put people in the boot and then generally they park them in a hot sunny spot and then they suffocate. You've watched those movies. Like, you've watched those. You've watched those movies, yes. So you do not put the bedding plants in the car the first time you go shopping. You go and do all your errands, woulda, 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 and then you stop at the Tain Centrum, and then you buy your plants, and then you take them straight home, all right? Also, when you get home, you take them out the boot. Ah, ah, ah. So I've touched on a point here, haven't I? Yes. So what then happens is, ha, huh, you forget them in the boot. And what happens next? A day later, you open the boot. Oh, machtig, machtig, Fricky. Yes, this the flying kiss. Fricky, we forgot them inside here. Absolutely, you forgot them in there. At this time, they've been sitting in the dark for 48 hours. Put you in the dark for 48 hours and see what happens to you. You start twitching and dribbling. Out the, out the left like lips here, you know, and, and guys, these plants are grown by some of the best growers in South Africa, the best growers. And what do we do? We get put them in our car, we treat them badly, we lock them up in a dark room with dripping water or without for 48 hours and then we take them out and only then do we plant them and we wonder why they don't do well. <laughs> I, I, I want to see. I want to see if anyone is if anyone is acknowledging anything that I am talking about. Yeah, come on, come on. There has to be. There has to be. Yeah, yeah. There you are. There you are. Oh, are we getting hugs from hugs to Rolo and the rest of the furries? Um. Oh my goodness. Yeah, but come on, guys. I I know you're out there. And I know there are you people there, there, there. You have to be in the mix because I've seen it done. I've seen it done. Then the next thing that happens is it's okay. You've got them out the car, but then you take them and you put them on the garage floor. Yeah? Out the car quickly on the garage floor. Near you like a netty furry furry answered. I'm coming back to you tomorrow. Do you know that most bedding plants die before they've even made it to the garden? Scandalic. Absolute atrocious. True story. They don't even make it into the garden. Do you think that's something like seeds? Yes, it is. So, guys, gardening is not expensive. It's how we treat the plants that makes it expensive because the plants don't do well. Um, so, come on, let's uh, let's get this right. And um, ah. Brigitte, okay, wait, wait, we got to put Brigitte's comment up. Uh, Brigitte, I love your honesty. Brigitte fried a bridal bouquet in the boot once. Absolute chaos. Also killed a few, not admission of guilt. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my shit. Oh, guilty, guilty. Heather, well done, guilty. And Nobantu, guilty. Yes, guilty, Gabby, maybe, or maybe, Catherine, 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 listen to me. Are you listening to me? Catherine says maybe, uh, I think you're talking fibs. I think your nose is going to go very, very long. But anyway, right, here we go. Uh, guys, we all know the story. Let's get it right. Okay, so we're going to start off with the basics. How do we get it right? Number one, the area that you're going to choose, prep it the day before. Okay, prep it the day before. Think about it. Or if you've got the whole of the weekend, then that's fine. Then you've got time. But prep takes time, guys. So get it right. First of all, garden fork. Remember, garden fork, what you want to do is you want to first loosen up that soil. Once you've loosened it up, a thick layer of compost, guys. And when I talk about a thick layer of compost, I mean a thick layer. I mean five to ten centimeters. 
Because this is the chance that we've got to put it in. Yeah, we've got the chance now. So let's just use it. Use the chance now while we've got time to put the compost in. So it's a beautiful thick layer of compost. Lay it out across the soil. And then what do we want to add? We want to add some of this stuff. Some good, good stuff. Okay, so I need to find my scissors because I want to tell you about this. Now, folks, what's important here is that I want to open this up first so I can give you a, a good, a good, a good, a good look. So this is called Wonder Organic Vita Boost. Now, look at it here. It's in, it's in little, little korokis. Well, I don't know what the other word is. Little granules, little korokis. And guys, the interesting thing is that if you actually don't read a, a, a bit about it, you, you kind of like might just wish over this product. And, and there's so much more to it than these little korokis here because this is actually a vermicompost. Okay, you lost me there, Tanya. What is a vermicompost? Vermicompost is actually worm castings, okay? What are, what's worm carb castings? That's the poop, the poo, the poo. The, would you have another word for it? Um, castings, excrement, the poo, okay? So the vermicompost is the worm poo. Now, we all know there was a very, very clever man that we might have learned about in history, and his name was Darwin. Ah. Darwin, yeah, I've read about him. Um, David Attenborough talks about him a lot. <laughs> David Attenborough. And here on the Galapagos Islands, we see the lesser feathered jackal. <laughs> okay, anyway, 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 moving along. Darwin was one of the most amazing, amazing pioneers in our world. And Darwin discovered the amazing, amazing attributes of the earthworm. The earthworm, when it eats something, when it passes through its gut, a whole lot of miracles happen. But basically, a teaspoon of vermicompost, and I actually have some here from my worm farm that I took out this morning. And come and take a close look here. So this is the vermicompost. So once the worms have eaten, you know, the leftovers that I've put inside my worm farm. Oh, here's Huey. I recognize him, and here's Dewey. Louie! Ah, oh, there's Louis. Yeah, the other names I can't remember. Uh, um, anyway, this stuff that's left, because they've now eaten all the organic material. You can see there are a few eggshells left here. And here are the little, little red, red wrigglers. Look at them. Look at them. Fiery little guys. Look, 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 look. You fiery little guy. No, come now, come now, come. Behave. Stay. Sit. Sit. Okay, so this is basically the vermicompost that's been left. So that's the excrement because they've eaten everything now. They've processed this and what's left is the vermicompost. Guys, that is in here. A teaspoon of vermicompost has been proven to have more than 200 good microbes and good activity, good microbes and bacteria for your garden. Isn't that insane? Isn't that insane? Um, earthworms... There has been so much research on them. I know some of you have your own um, uh, earthworm uh, farms at home. Come on, we're putting these little guys back here. No one got left behind. Ah, oh, you see, there's always one. There's always one. Huey, Huey, you want to go on holiday? Do you want to go fishing? You want to go fishing? No, he doesn't want to go fishing. Okay, go back there. All right. So, uh, earthworm castings aren't saying, guys. They, they really provide an amazing amount of nutrition for your garden. Um, here you have a vermicompost, which is the earth, earthworm castings that have been put into with other organic material that's been pelletalized. It's 25 to 50 grams per square meter. So you sprinkle that over your compost, all right, in preparation for your garden beds. What does it do? It helps with your water absorption capacity. What does that mean? Basically what it means is your soil is better. Your soil is well better drained, plus it also holds the moisture in the right capacity. So it improves soil structure, all right, because it's organic. That's why. Okay, um, the other thing that it does is it releases huge amounts of nutrition. So we've got calcium in there, we've got phosphates in there. Phosphates improve, improve. what is it? We taught you last week. Phosphates, roots, root growth. It's got nitrogen, it's also got some potassium in it, um, and it's got some zinc in it, all the things that we're needing. Okay, so we've scattered that on now. We've put on 50 to 
um, 25 to 50 grams per square meter, and then we rake it in. Okay, I um, beg your pardon. Then we fork it in. Okay, we're not using a spade here. You're forking it in because as you're doing that, you're just turning the soil, you're getting it all mixed up. Then you rake it flat. Then you rake it flat, and if you're left with any clods, and clods is only, or, or clumps of soil, folks, take that, put it in between your hands, and just crumble it. Crumble it so that it gets nicely spread out. All right. Once you've got a nice even surface, then we are ready to plant. However, 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 if your bedding plants are looking a little bit dry, and you know when they're looking dry because they're hanging, like, ugh, they're hanging off the tray. I have seen impatience become uh, lateral growers, <laughs> you know, because they go from that to that. Oh, you've seen them, guys, when they're lying flat. Um, it's important to rehydrate the tray before you plant it. So how do you do that? It's really simple. Um, grab yourselves a Tupperware. Um, this has got some palm peat in it, but imagine that we just put some water in here and you just popped that in there and you leave it for about 20 minutes. Just leave it. It's going to naturally suck up all the moisture, okay, it's going to suck it up through here, suck up the moisture into the tray, and it's just going to help with the transplant stress. Very, very important, okay, very important. You might think this is like, oh, Tanya, you're just making me do more work. I am not, guys. I'm telling you this because it's important. Right, then it comes to planting. Okie dokie. Now, um, I've got a little piece of paper here, and I want to show you some of the basics on planting. Now, the most important thing, first of all, is how do you take one of these little seedlings out of the trays? And I have seen too many murderous stories. We could write Murder She Wrote with a whole lot of names, and some of you might even be on here because you grab the seedling, watch what happens. You grab it and you pull it and you pull it. Oh, look what happens. Look what happens. All the soil is left behind. You've done that. I've seen you. I've seen you. Look, the soil is left behind, and there is the poor root of the plant. Ibo near wena. Near, near, near. Okay? So please, guys, this is how you're meant to do it. Remember? In your seedling tray, you can pop it. Okay? Can you see there? Put your finger there. You can literally just pop it, just like that. Pop it, grab it by the edges, turn it just to its side, and out comes the entire little cavity. Right. Who do you think is going to be better off? This guy or this guy when being transplanted? Who is going to be better off? Huh? Look at it. All its roots intact. It's lovely feeder roots. Here we left half of them behind. Oh my gosh. Well, yeah. Oh, but it does smell nice. That's white Allison. I love white Allison. Also easy to grow from seed. Really. Oh. And when they say honey, they really do mean honey. It's beautiful. Oh, it's sweet, sweet, sweet. It really is. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. But please, guys, that's how you take it out of the punnet. Very, very important, okay? So let's put that little baby back. My friend, we'll do our best to resurrect you um, in the days to come, but I don't see much hope. Um, yeah, okay, right. So we take the little guys out. Then I want you to plan your space. So if you've got three trays of bedding plants, if you've got 10 trays, whatever your space is, but let's pretend that this is your garden bed. This is the area that you want to work on, okay? Let's pretend that that's it. Now, the worst thing you can do is this, and X marks the spot of the, the young plant, is to literally go there, 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 uh -huh. Nice little straight rows. No, my friends, no. Because this is what happens. This little plant is going to start growing, okay? And that plant's going to start growing. And then they touch. And then they grow into each other. They start growing into each other, which does not help, okay? Because then they're not getting the full space that they require. So how should you be planting them? You should be planting them like this. Take a look here. One plant, second plant, third plant. Now, okay, can you guys see there? Now, where do we go with the next one? We go here and here. We make triangles. One to there, two to there, three to there. 
there's the triangle, okay? Can you see it? There, there, there's the next triangle. And then from there to there to there. That's how we need to plant them. So 45 degrees across to the next one, across to the next one, because then when they start growing, ah, look at that, we've got more space. Do you see that? All of a sudden, we have maximized the space for our plants to be able to grow and they're not going to be squashing into each other and inhibiting the growth. So please, also it gives them, what's the word? You get more. You kind of, they, you, you use less to fill more of a space, if that makes sense. Okay, so, so whereas if you planted in straight, straight, straight lines, you would probably go through three trays. If you planted in my method, you'd probably only go through two trays. Okay, so do that. It works. It really, really does. But that's really important so you don't end up with those terrible, terrible straight, straight, rachet, lena, rachet, lena, rachet, lena. Okay, now remember, the important thing, let's see if I can hit the camera. Bah. Did I get you? No. Three, two, one. Oh, what a shot. What a shot. Okay, guys, what's important after that um, is that you're going to plant your little babies. Now, when it comes to planting, we're going to use this palm peat as a little example of how you're going to do it. Now, let's pretend that this is the soil. Okay, and remember, we've put our compost on, we've put our organic Vita Boost on here, we've dug it all in, we've raked it now, we've evened it, and we've worked out where we're going to plant them. Folks, use the right tools for the job, please. Please use the right tools. Um, we came across this little gardening kit, and I've got to tell you, I think it is just fantastic for people who live small areas. Like, uh, you've got a little area, you've got a little balcony, you've got a little hanging basket. And it doesn't even matter if you've got a big garden, because everybody needs a few little things when they garden. You know, like, like a little quick, 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 quick. Um, these guys, uh, Gardena, uh, one of our favorite partners, have bought out this little kit, which is called Balcony Basics. Now, okay, you've turned the soil, you've done everything. A trowel, boys and girls, a trowel, okay? A trowel, you're going to dig it, okay, you're going to open it up and then you're going to take your little plant, grab it, pull it over there and you're going to put it in. Now, spot the mistake. Tell me what's wrong. Tell me what's wrong. It's still wrong. If you did not prepare your soil this is going to be one of the hardest jobs for you to do. Because if you did not turn the soil over with a garden fork and you just went in straight away with your little trowel, you're going to be digging, <laughs> digging, and the soil's hard. <laughs> I'm over it. And you're looking at, I've got six more trays to plant. This is going to take forever, baby. I'm over it. I'm so over it. Because then what you do is you start making a little hole and you're like, okay, I can't dig, I've got like 52 of these to dig, like I'm um, over it. So you take the little plant and you put it in and then you squash it. You will fit. You know, like when you, as a youngster, my mother tried to teach me patience. <laughs> I think she's still trying from heaven. Uh, she used to give me um, puzzles to do. You know, puzzles? And you get that one and you must fit. I'm sure you fit in there. Oh, my poor mother, my poor mother, um, God bless her, yeah, and all the angels. <laughs> so, guys, it's important, please, it, it's so, because I've seen you guys do this, I've seen you try and squash a plant into a small hole. We have a saying in gardening, never put a hundred rand plant in a one rand hole. Never, ever put a hundred rand plant in a one rand hole. That's quality. Don't ever, ever do that. So, you've opened up your little hole, okay, you pop your little seedling in, make sure that it is buried just below the original soil level, just the original level, okay, and then you're going to pop it round, get your soil round, give it a little squeeze, a little squeeze, and Bob's your uncle. That's the way that you plant it, okay, that's the way. Guys, please, it's so important, okay, right, come baby, come, 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 go back inside here, okay. Right, um, I want to talk about this little kit first, guys. You get a little spade, you get this thing. Now, 
Now, what is that thing? It's a jug. No, it's not for the kitchen, guys. It's not for the kitchen. What do you use it for? Oh, look at that. I can carry a bit of compost around. Oh, look at that. I might need some fertilizer. And I might need to carry some fertilizer around instead of carrying the whole bag so I can carry some fertilizer around. Mm, I can also use it to carry some water in if I just need to water one or two plants. Nifty, nifty. Yeah. What else can I use it for? Yeah, scraping. Collecting, putting a bit of potting soil in. If you're planting one or two plants, your compost in here to go to pop into the hole for one. Okay, nice and easy, guys. Plus a nice little secateur. And guys, I want to show you about the secateur because you know these people from Germany are very, 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 very clever. Way cleverer than we'd ever, ever be. But um, in this little secateur, and coming really close here, I want to show you. So why do I like this? Because it is small. You see, my hand is fitting in there really nicely. Really, really nicely. Nice and small. Um, plus, besides the stainless steel blades and the non-rust and all that other fancy stuff that it comes with, um, it has a, <laughs> the thing that I tell you never to do, but it has a wire function. Do you see there, at the back, there's that little loop. Can you see that little loop there? There's like a little donga in there little indentation. This is specifically designed, oh yes, for wire cutting. So, <laughs> yes, and you know, I know that so many of you have used your secateurs for cutting wire, but not when it had that little round thing in there. You turned it into one. You re-engineered it. And then you wondered why the next time you came to prune, there were little teeth marks and there were little like gouges all in your blade. I know you've done it. I know you've used it to open cans of paint, tins of paint. I know you've used it to cut wire. I know you've even used it to dig out a weed. Haibo wena near sesyong, near, near, near. So use the tools for the right job and they will last forever. They really, really will. Remember, when you're finished using your tools, um, always give them a little wipe. Um, give them a little wipe with um, either some disinfectant or use a lubricant. Give them a wipe down and pop them back. But I really like that little guy. Um, nice, and, nice and nifty and can easily be stored anywhere. So, right, let's move along. Okay. Um, I go to the, what's this lady say? I go to the fishing shop and buy some earthworms every season for my garden. I, I feed them to the hardy dolls, obviously, because I can hardly find the worms. Okay, no, 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 Teresa. Wrigley red wrigglers. Red wrigglers are different worms. Red wrigglers are the worms that you put in your worm farm. Okay, they're different to earthworms, the big long earthworm. A red wriggler is a shorter worm. He's shorter, he's red. But I think we'll have to have another lesson on that at a later stage. But let's get on to what is out there, what can we plant, and how. Okay, so you know all of that. I want to start off with these guys. Guys, it is these. Now, some of you might be saying, oh, come on, Tanya. Really? Really? But let me tell you, the humble little marigold, the humble little marigold has gone through amazing transformation. It's like it's been on the RuPaul show, you know. It's fabulous now. It's just fabulous. It used to be like common as mud and it used to be quite drab and she's had a bit of a makeover and now she looks fab. There are beautiful varieties out there, guys. Look out for them. This one is called Durango. Now, Durango was introduced to the market a good few years ago, but from a flowering point of view and from the colors, you get them in this beautiful orange, but look how big the flowers are. Look at the size of that flower. Really nice and big, okay? Very, very free flowering, um, and the yellow is spectacular. Now, this over here, these varieties are all part of a new group or a new genre, what I can call. Um, this one in particular is called Strawberry Blonde. Now, I want you to look at this over here. Strawberry Blonde is like, it's, um, yeah, it's Strawberry Blonde. Who, who is, who's that actress? Who's that chick with Strawberry Blonde hair? She's quite good looking. Um, not Hayley Berry. What's her name? She was on, um, I think she was on that 007 gimmick movie, Charlie's Angels. Who's that? Come on, guys, help me. Okay, anyway, none of these people watch Charlie's Angels. What's her name? Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore. 
that's her, Drew Barrymore. Oh, well done, team. Well done. Okay, so this is Strawberry Blonde. This over here, they all called the Strawberry Series, but Strawberry Blonde is exactly that. Look, there's a bit of yellow in it. It's a full double. It is a full, full flower. Look at that. So at different times of the season, depending on the heat, that is how it reacts. So different temperatures bring out the different coloring. So you can see in a group of plants, you would have the yellow, you would have almost a dusty pink and then going to a russet. All in the same plant. One plant has the ability to do all those different colors. I love that. I really, really like that. Okay, you've got this one. Guess what its name is? Fireball. Yes. Fireball, beautiful plant, absolutely fantastic. So keep a look out at your local garden center. Guys, they tough. Remember, plant them in and amongst your veggies. Plant them right next to their veggies because they really do help to keep away the hojos. Okay, so marigolds on our way. Next up, now many of you cried long, long tears for many years. Long, long tears when we couldn't get hold of impatience because there was that big... Um, fungal infection that came across from the States um, and what did it do? It wiped out all our patients. They literally imploded, guys. They imploded. All right. So, um, guys, the impatients that have been brought in by Ball Stratov and well done to them for finding a disease-resistant impatience that we can, we can use. Now, call them impatients, call them impatience, um, call them whatever you would like to. They are fantastic in the garden. The variety that you need to look for, ask for them by name, are they beacon? Are these the beacon impatience? Because that's what it is. Think about beacon of light, beacon impatience, beacon all sorts. That's licorice all sorts made by beacon. You know what I mean. Um, guys, please use them. Uh, it, in fact, I find it very difficult to, to even find a plant that, that doesn't match or that matches anywhere close to a white impatience. I love using white impatience in the garden. I love this orangey red. Uh, remember, snails do like them, so either put down the eggshells around them or put down a snail bait, but do be aware that the snails come out at night and they do love your impatience. But beacon impatience, we've had them in South Africa for two seasons now, have proved to be amazing. So you can buy them with confidence. You don't need to worry that they are going to implode. However, if you are a bit stressed out, and I'm gonna suggest that you do this because I did it to my impatients. Um, I've, if you've been following my videos on Facebook, where I've been taking you through a little walk through my garden, you'll know that I resurrected an area of lawn purely by using Root Pro, okay? Because what did I tell you what the Root Pro does? Remember, it's a fungal inoculant, okay? It's a good fungus that helps to fight off the bad fungus and it's fungus that killed our patients all right it's fungal infections that live in waterlogged soil that make your plants just fall over because that's where they thrive so use the root pro guys it works brilliantly it's revived many of my plants that were looking a bit sad a bit sad and it brought them back but you can also use it as kind of like a good insurance policy you know when the roof's blown off your house, it's a bit late to say, I should have had that insurance policy. No, no, have the insurance policy first. So apply the Root Pro. It's really easy. It's one sachet, guys, into five liters of water. One sachet into five liters of water. All you do is you simply just pour it on to the soil, okay? There it is there. You just water it on, and what it does is this fungus grows along the roots of your plant where you're inoculating grows along the roots and makes a sheath and protects it. Eats all the bad bacteria here, makes nutrition more available to your plant, okay, because there's a symbiotic relationship. I cannot tell you, Root Pro has brought back to life Galadias of mine. It's brought back to life some anthuriums that I was going to lose because they were kind of rotting away, not looking all that good. So if you're worried about your bedding plants, put this down. Okay, right, what next? What can we use? Now, I love these. Oh, mommy, 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 mommy. Look at these little things. Now, some of you call them mini petunias. Um, their proper name is, oh, can you come and look at this one over here? Um, but we'll get to this in a second. Ma Mason, I want you to really look at this one here. It's beautiful. Look at this yellow. Look at this yellow. Oh, mommy, isn't it cute? It's really, really gorgeous. Now, 
Um, there's another one here. Um, and I'm bringing these to the front here so you can have a good look at them. Now, guys, the, these are all, they've got a very fancy name. They're called um, Kelly Bracoas. Okay, Kelly Bracoas, mini petunia. They're actually a cousin of the petunia. They're not a petunia. They're separately classified. But don't worry about that. You can call them mini petunias. It's okay. All right. So many different names for them. But all you need to know is that there's some beautiful doubles. Look at that lovely double. Isn't it spectacular? Look at it. Beautiful pink, pink double. I, I, I love it. There's this rusty, almost orange. There's this one, which is my favorite. This is called Conga. Everybody do the Conga. Is, isn't there a song like that? No. I'm getting blank looks. Okay. Anyway, last week was Lemon Tree. Now, I'm sure there's a song. Come on. Yes, there is a song. Conga beat, there it is, yes, everybody do the conga beat, okay, right, okay, anyway, that's why I stick to plants, this is called conga, look at that colour, look at it, I mean, guys, come on, come on, nothing, you, you, you can't even match up to that, it, it's wicked, um, they're the beautiful little pale pinks, now all of them, their habit is generally like this, they're quite compact, um, they're quite graceful, so they work beautifully in pots, beautifully on the edges of garden beds, because you can see, like this one, they are quite graceful, all right, they really do work, um, so in the edges of beds, rockeries, just to be able to go over, a couple of things I want to tell you about how to look after them, all right, and this is where I'm going to get my trusted pair of secateurs out. Now, don't ooh and ah and tell me that I'm killing them. These are a few rules that you need to know. Calibracoas need to really, in between waterings, make sure that they really drain well, okay? Very, very important. Make sure that they drain very well first. So soil must almost be to the edge of very dry before you rewater. They hate wet feet. They really hate wet feet. Um, so when I plant these, I've got some in pots at the moment. I've got some in the garden beds. What do I do? Because I know that they sometimes can get that root disease. What do I do? I feed them with root pro. Yes. Yes. Now you're getting the story. Okay. Sometimes they can get a bit leggy. Oh, the other thing is they're greedy feeders. They're hungry. Okay. So make sure that you do your preparation, like we told you, using the Vita Boost. Also, please, you can use Multigrow. Once they've got going, um, you can feed them with this every two weeks, every 10 days. Give them some Multigrow because it's got all the right stuff that you need, okay, to make sure that you're giving them food. These things need food. If they're getting too long and leggy, guys, prune them. When you prune them, never remove, never ever remove more than a third a third of the plant at a time and that's important because if you remove remove more than a third of the plant at a time you're gonna kill it you will kill it never prune it too hard please never prune your calibraco is too hard or else that will be the end of it goodbye and that's the last time you saw it so rather um, little bits of pruning um, to keep it going if it's starting to get too leggy. Um, it'll, it, it'll last as a perennial in your garden. Um, and the other interesting thing about these, and I want you to come and, and have a real close look here, is what, they, what we call self-cleaning. And it's very interesting about what we call self-cleaning because you can see this little bud is almost finished. It, it's finished flowering, this flower. And um, there it's now kind of dried up. Instead of us having to actually go and physically pinch that off, this is what happens in time. It just falls off. You see that? So there it is. It's just fallen off. Nice and simple. So that's what they call self-cleaning, um, which I think is quite fun. Okay. What else can we be planting? Begonias, guys. Beautiful begonias. Um, remember, they can grow in the full sun and semi-shade. Work very, very well. Um, two others I want to talk about quickly. Gypsophila gypsy. Aren't they beautiful? I mean, come on. They are just... They're spectacular. I love these. And you know what's also great about them? That when you've planted one and you loosen the soil up around the plant, underneath it, when you lift it up, like in a couple of months' time, there are going to be hundreds of little guys coming up all around them. Really easy. It self-seeds so, so easily. Um, so let's go and see. I believe I've got a whole lot of questions here. So let's go and have a look at the queue and let's get on to this. Um... um um, Chaya says, everyone likes gardening, but nowadays it becomes a bit more expensive. Okay, yes, gardening can become expensive if we neglect the things that are important. But also if you're worried about budget, guys, there's always seeds. 
And if you missed our, our, one of our Facebook live sessions on how to get the most out of your seed, then please go back onto my Facebook page and you'll be able to find the one on seed sowing. Really, really important. Um, so please do go and have a look at that. But seeds, it's an inexpensive way that you can then grow your own and really you can get loads out of them. Loads, loads out of them. Okay. Um, Jillian Nell says, Tanya, you're the best brain break for my boys. <laughs> they absolutely love listening and watching your shows. And clearly they are learning too. We can't wait for exams to be over so we can get back into the gardens. Oh, hallelujah. Fantastic. You know, if you've had a bad day and your head's like all fuzzy, or you've had a fight with your boss, nothing like giving something a good prune. You know what I mean? You can even pretend that the plant is somebody. Hmm, hmm. Or dig a hole. If you really, really, really had a bad day, go and dig a hole. By the time you've dug that hole, you are exhausted and all your worries are simply gone. Right. Um, Tian, on the topic of soil and hanging baskets, my hanging baskets and full sun dry out very quickly. What else besides peat would you recommend? Oh, Tian, you are on the money. Good question. Good question. Tian, you must use this stuff. It's called hydro cash. Now, we, we say that this is a water retaining granule or gel. And um, we, we say it, we call carbon loading your garden. Now, um, Tian, what you want to do is you want to use uh, a cap full of this. There's a, little, there's a little cap in here. A cap full of this into, and you can see it when it comes out, it's, 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 got, it's a carbon base as well. So it really, you can see, this black is the carbon, okay? Now, you take one teaspoon of this, one of these little guys, and pop it into a five litre bucket. Yes, a five litre bucket of water. And you leave it there for a couple of minutes. And what it does is it starts absorbing the water. Now, to demonstrate, here I've had, and this is, geez, I think this is about a quarter of a teaspoon that I've added in here and I've added some water. But watch, as soon as I add more water and just give it a stir, the stuff is incredible. What you do, Tian, is you can either mix the dry granules into your mixture with your palm peat and your potting soil. So you add a teaspoon of your dry granules, okay, into it. Or you can do this where you make it into this beautiful liquid. Now I'm gonna give this a few seconds and you'll see all that water that I added in is gonna get sucked up. So if you're planting big shrubs, guys, mix this up into a big trug. You know the trug, my famous Gucci handbag? Mix it up into that, take two or three handfuls, bang it into the bottom of the hole, and then you put your plant on top of it. Ah! So that when your plants get stressed out, look at that, all that water's gone. Look at that already. Incredible. It's all in here. So when your plants need it, where do they get it from? Their roots go in there, suck it out, and away they go, baby. Away they go. So I actually want to add more water because... Uh, this this product amazes me. You know, we planted a whole lot of pin cushions um, about two weeks ago, and it's been hot, guys. It's been hot, and we know that pin cushions and proteas for their first few weeks of their life really hate drying out. They you, you, they dry out and and they dead. And um, we used a good three handfuls of this gel, mixed gel already. In I'm just going to put it over here into the bot at the bottom of the planting hole. Pop the pin cushion on top, and you know what? We have not had one loss. And for that. I hold solely that guy responsible. So for your bedding plants as well, I wouldn't do it for the petunias. No, because remember we said that they like to be well drained first. So for any of your other bedding plants, sprinkle a bit of the hydro cash, okay, on top of the soil, the dry hydro cash, then mix it in like when you're mixing in your compost um, and your vitagro, very importantly. Okay, right. I've got very dirty hands now and I'm about to touch a mouse. A mouse. Right, let's have a look. Uh, Karen says, uh, what can we do to stop the amaryllis stalk from rotting below the flower? 